So good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's time for us to get started. So let's, let's go ahead and dive into this. It's a short session. Um, I do not believe that I'll be able to take questions this afternoon, it being so short, but you can always find me afterwards to ask me a question if something's not clear here today, okay? It is also possible that you will ask me a question that I do not know the answer to. If that's the case, you are welcome to follow up with me later and we'll get it answered for you, okay? Today we're gonna to talk about understanding maintenance in Azure SQL. So adoption of the cloud is at an all time high with no end in sight. Uh, managing a small fleet of databases in an on premises world is something that you've, you understand, it's something that you're good at. You and your team, right, completely know the steps to that dance. Um, but in Azure, is the same true? Um, well, so in Microsoft Azure, we handle a lot of the tasks for you automatically. And so today we're gonna talk about automatic updates and what happens during maintenance. Um, this is a piece of a larger session that, um, that I, where I talk about upskilling to Azure SQL from on-prem and the maintenance section and what happens in that window was the session, the section that I got the most questions about. So we decided to pull it out. Instead of making it five minutes, make it a 15 to 20 minute session. And so that's where you find yourself today. So I'm Ree Merritt. I'm a senior program manager for Microsoft. I am the um, PG lead for the MVP program for the data platform. I have a few MVPs in here today. I think I've counted at least six. If I didn't count you, um, I can't see you. <laughs> so um, I also run the Azure Data Community. So if any of you are involved in a um, data platform user group, odds are good you're in my network. Um, so I'd be happy to meet you if you'd like to introduce yourself to me later. Um, I am a user group leader and I do run local events as well. Um, you can follow me at Azure SQL, at, at Irish SQL on Twitter. Uh, make note of my email address, re.merit at microsoft.com if you think you're gonna have a question for me later. Okay, let's talk about um, Azure SQL PaaS offerings. So Azure SQL Managed Instance and Azure SQL Database are our platform as a service offerings. Um, uh, these are two deployment options that you have as part of the Azure SQL family. Um, Azure SQL Managed Instance um, gives you just an instance of SQL Server. Um, and it removes much of the overhead that you would have managing a virtual machine. Um, most of the features available in SQL Server are available in Azure SQL Managed Instance. Um, I have described Managed Instance as like a zero entry pool, right? So instead of jumping into the pool at the three foot end or meter end, <laughs> or even the, 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 the deep end where a diving board would be, it's a zero entry, like walking into a beach, right? It slopes in. It's the easiest way for an on-prem DBA to get involved in managed instance. Azure SQL Database is another one of our PaaS offerings, um, but it abstracts both the OS and the instance um, layer from you um, so that you, you don't see it, you don't have to manage it, you don't have to maintain it, we do. Um, but this is a deployment option that um, lets you spin up a database and just start um, developing against it immediately. So um, utilizing our platform as a service offering, or PaaS, that means that you, the DBA, are gonna manage a lot less than you typically would in an on-prem SQL Server or even in SQL Server on Azure VMs, um, as part of, which is part of our IaaS offerings. So if you run one of the PaaS offerings, Microsoft is responsible for the following tasks backup of your database and transaction logs, high availability within your Azure region with a financial guarantee, in installation, configuration, and patching of SQL Server, installation, configuration, and patching of Windows Server, consistency checks on your database, and performance monitoring of your database. So when we say automatic updates, what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that you don't have to worry about upgrading your environment at all. So no more SQL patching, no more OS patching, and Microsoft has committed to not change the SQL engine under a specific compatibility level. So what does that mean? That means that your developers should align their apps to the compatibility level of the database. So we won't ever change that out from under you. 
Um, if you can get your developers to do that. Quick show of hands, how many of you are DBAs? How many of you are developers? How many of you are developers that do DBA tasks? Okay. Just checking. It's not gonna make a difference on what you get out of this today. I just was curious. So what exactly is a planned maintenance event? Um, so how many of you have experience with availability groups? Most of you? Okay. So, um, or even, I mean, old school clustering, right? <laughs> so, um, so for each database, Azure SQL DB um, maintains a quorum of database replicas where one replica is the primary. So, right, so just like in an availability group, you have your primary, you have a secondary, maybe you have a secondary and a secondary, depending on what kind of environment you're in. So at all times, a primary rec replica is going to be online and servicing, and there must be one secondary that is healthy, okay? Now, if you're on, um, was it premium, business critical or premium, um, you'll actually always have a second one that's online, and then you'd have a third one that is always healthy. So, but during a, plan, during a planned maintenance event, these secondaries are gonna go offline one at a time, they'll get patched, and then they'll essentially reboot, right? They'll get patched and then they'll reboot, then your secondary gets patched and reboot, and then when it's time for your primary to get reboot, brooded, just like in an availability group, your primary is gonna fail over to a secondary, and when it is online and healthy, that primary is gonna get updated, whatever maintenance is happening to it, it's gonna come down and it's gonna come back up. Um, so, again, just like, um, um, just like in an availability gr group, right? So when do updates happen? Hold on, we're gonna see if I skipped a slide. I did. <laughs> so what exactly do you expect during a planned maintenance event? Um, well, so the resource is available during the process except for a very, very short reconfiguration that happens at the end of the operation, right? So right in that reboot. And that can last, it's less than eight, the average is less than eight seconds. Um, so if your, if your application is in the middle of a long running process, it's gonna have to reconnect, just like it does in an on-prem world when you, bring, um, when you bring that, or fail that primary over. So that being said, it's really, really important for your application to have a healthy retry logic. Um, in my career as a DBA, that is one of the things that for whatever reason I found developers pushed back on. And so if one of you understands why, <laughs> you push back on retry logic, like if it doesn't connect, just try again and it would probably connect. Um, <laughs> so again, um, once it retries, what would happen is that secondary or the, that application extension <laughs> is gonna hit the database wherever it resides now, right? So what was your secondary is now your primary. So it's gonna, um, it's gonna hit that. So now, if a new connection is attempted while the failover is happening, you get a very, very specific error it's um, 46113, database unavailable, please try reconnection later. Retry logic, okay? So again, long running query, you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to restart that. So planned maintenance events, updates occur about every 35 days. Now, so what that means is um, you can expect, you know, one failover just about every month. Um, we do try very hard to, to package things together so that you don't have more than one a month. And um, I, I, obviously it happens sometimes, right? Critical patch, something didn't go wrong. We also try very hard to make sure that we can fit everything into that one window um, so that you don't have, it doesn't go over the time that we allot for it as well. So. Um, and maintenance windows will only happen during the, um, either the window you select or the default window because you didn't select a window. 
So we will get to that in just a second. So um, this, is what, this is what started this whole session right here. So when do updates happen and can I choose when they happen? Not really, sort of, maybe, okay? Or, oh, the DBA answer, it depends. So <laughs> not specifically, but you can choose between a pre-scheduled weekday or a weekend window, or you can leave the default in place, right? Let me see if I can see the screen up here. So the system default is 5 to 8 p.m., and this is in the region where your server is, okay? So 5 to 8 p.m., you can set it to 10 to 6, and my servers are in Central, by the way, the ones I've built, the region, or 10 to 6, Friday through Saturday. So um, once you pick that maintenance window feature for specifically for Azure SQL Database or Azure SQL Managed Instance Resources, um, this kind of makes any kind of impactful maintenance more predictable, which is, uh, you know, if you're DBA, it's obviously important. When they first, when this first went into preview, I was in a meeting with the marketing team and they were talking about, you know, oh, this is coming next and then this is coming next and this is gonna be in preview. And they kind of blew right past this. And I'm typically in there just, just to pay attention and not contribute to go, oh, hey, I think I have some people who can help socialize that or whatever, but they kind of blew right past this. And I was like, wait, wait, can we back up just a second, what? I can, I can now pick when I want maintenance to happen. It's the question I get the most. It really, really matters to a DBA. I need to know, my business needs to know when that failover is gonna happen. And I realized to some people it may, and depending on what industry you're in, it may not matter at all, right? This less than eight second failover. But if you're in an industry where it matters, to be able to pick this window is super, super important. Now this maintenance window can contain updates for hardware, firmware, operating systems, um, satellite software components, the SQL engine, backups are gonna happen during this window, your full backup's gonna happen during this window. Um, and we cram all this stuff in there to essentially minimize how many maintenance events you're gonna have, and have. okay? So once that maintenance window is selected and you're no longer using the default, um, the service configurations completed, that planned maintenance is only gonna occur during the window of your choice. And while maintenance events typically complete within a single window, every once in a while, it's not gonna complete what happened, and then it's just gonna span the next, right, the next Friday to Saturday window that you had, is when it will finish all of that stuff. It's not as if on a Saturday, you know, it doesn't get finished so randomly on a Tuesday it will happen. However, <laughs> and I saw this on the page today, I hadn't noticed it before. If it's critical and it didn't finish, right? Like if it's, if, it's a, if it's a critical security patch, something like that, they may. We'll get to it in a second. You can get alerted about these kind of things, right? About maintenance window. Um, I recently asked about, is Nico here? Danny, nobody from the MI team? I talked to the MI team about this recently, about a smaller maintenance window, because that seems like a big window sometimes, except it's not like you're on your own server. You're in the cloud, right? It's somebody else's server. It's a really big server. So there's a lot going on there, but they are aware of the need for smaller windows, um, and that's legally what they'll allow me to say. <laughs> so advanced notifications. So now you know roughly when things are gonna happen, um, but can you, how much more can you know, right? So advanced notifications is currently in preview. Um, and this is, advanced notifications are available for, um, for those systems where you've picked your own window. If you leave the default window in, you don't have this as an option, okay? So advanced notifications will enable you, the customer, to configure notifications to be sent 24 hours in advance of any planned event. Um, notifications can be configured so that you get text, emails, um, Azure push notifications, or a voicemail when planned notifications are gonna happen within the next 24 hours. 
Um, additional notifications are sent when maintenance begins and when maintenance ends. Um, and again, they, this can't be configured if you use the system default. It can only be configured if you pick a separate maintenance window. Um, configuring and using maintenance windows is available for the following offer types. So we have pay as you go, cloud solution provider, Microsoft Enterprise Agreement, or Microsoft Customer Agreement. And so you'll get an email that says maintenance is planned. You can get an email text, et cetera, et cetera, right? Where it's planned, where it's in progress, when it completes, if it's been rescheduled, or if it's been canceled. I spoke canceled with one L. Does that bother anybody in this room? I had somebody ask about that today. John Morehouse, you're the only one. I'm leaving it. Okay. <laughs> So, um, so to set advanced notifications, you'll go to the planned maintenance page in the Azure portal. Is everybody here at least a little bit familiar with the Azure portal? It's totally okay if you're not, but we do have ways for you, you can tinker in the Azure portal for free. Um, Bob Ward through his Microsoft Learn um, series has, you can spin up a sandbox that's good for a few hours, you could go tinker um, in the Azure portal. Anyway, so you go to the planned maintenance page, you select health alerts, you add a, add a service alert, you go to the scope and you set the subscription and the subscription is essentially, you know, like my environment, right? That I have access to, it's my, um, if it were a group of servers, that's what you would think of it. Or if it was my data center, that's what you'd think of it. Um, you'd go to conditions and you're gonna, there's a services drop down you would pick that it's Azure SQL or, or SQL services or whatever you want to get alerted on. You're going to pick the region that you care about. And then finally for event types and under event types where you would set planned maintenance. And once you've done that, that you want to be alerted on that, you can configure um, alerts um, and who they come to and how they come to. They're automatically going to go to the Azure administrator. Your Azure administrator will probably have to help set alerts up to go to you that you can receive them, okay? So what's left for you to do in Azure SQL? Well, configuring disaster recovery across the Azure, Azure regions, it is just a, a few clicks, but you get to talk your boss into paying for it. Um, performance tuning. There is some performance tuning that happens in Azure SQL. Um, but it's a great thing for you as a DBA or a developer to learn. It is a quantifiable part of your job. Saving money on a query in Azure saves your company money. And when it comes review time, it's really easy for your boss to be able to say to the company, here's the money that my people saved you because they're good at their job, okay? Um, let's see, uh, network architecture. So you now kind of need to be you kind of need to understand how architecture works a little bit. Um, I certainly don't expect all of you to be network administrators or anything like that, but you have to understand it because you have to make sure that your virtual networks can connect to your Azure SQL securely. Um, <laughs> and um, user management, still on you. Security, still on you. Um, and again, or the most important thing that you can do as a DBA is... Um, Help, data is the new oil. It is the most valuable thing your company owns. And if you can help your company derive value out of the data that they have, then you're valuable, okay? So a lot of things that you can do as a DBA in Azure SQL um, to improve, you know, improve performance, save money, you know, create money, make yourself appear really, really valuable. Well, I'll make the slide deck available. Everything that's in here, I have a link to reference um, so that you can go look it up for yourself later. Um, all the different pages, a lot of them had links to them so you can go um, find the resource. Um, and I don't think we have time for any questions, but if you have one, you're welcome to come ask me here. I'll go ahead and unplug. I don't know if we have another speaker starting right away. Do we? Oh, we got, no, I'm just kidding. We don't really have 10 minutes, but. <laughs> so um, that is, oh, hold on. And there's a QR code for me. Sorry. Um, thank you all very, very much for coming today. I really appreciate it.